All right, board game fans, welcome back to another vintage Battletech unboxing, where today we will be unboxing City Tech First Edition. Now, unlike the last unboxing video of Battletech Second Edition, where I had pretty much a good idea of what to expect out of that box, this particular box I have no idea what to expect. The closest I ever got to owning anything out of this box was having the rule book, so... From what I understand from the seller on eBay, it's complete, so I've not opened this yet. Let's find out what's inside. Liz is not here with me today, so we're doing this all just me. All right, here's the rule book. Got another Shadowhawk on the front there. The Battletech game of urban combat. Oh, there's a stalker. Now, I did have this before, so it's not completely foreign to me. There, I recall there being a story in here somewhere about a locust pilot who was just really crazy. Here we've got a spider ripping the arm off of what looks like an Ost Scout. Something like that. And a Shadowhawk blasting another Ost Scout. Could be an Ost Soul, but I, I don't think so. Yeah, it looks like the Scout to me. So, I mean, this looks like your basic City Tech rule book. Again, no pre-generated record sheets here, so it looks like... Yeah, I was right. Yeah, the soul has hands. Uh, looks like you'd have to look through here and just copy the information down onto a blank record sheet. But they got some vehicles, though. That's kind of interesting. Aside from your... Standard mechs that everybody, I suppose, up until this point would be used to. Ah, here we go. Here's something interesting. This book has introduced Auto Cannon 2, 5, 10, and 20, whereas the previous set did not have anything like that. So I wonder if this was the first set that introduced those Auto Cannon types. Love how it just says Particle Cannon there for the PPC. So that's pretty interesting. I didn't know this was the set that introduced that, if that is in fact the case. Some blank vehicle record sheets here. Or that's a... Oh look, that's a pre-generated one. Falcon Hovercraft. Pull that out. Another blank sheet. Here we go. It's kind of cool. Oh, infantry, of course. I believe it was this set that introduced the concept of infantry that was able to hide out in buildings and plink away at you as you walked past with your mech. All right, oh, in the back here we've got another full table. I think it's kind of cool. The numbers for the base to hit appear to have remained the same. Four, six, and eight for short, medium, long. Now, I did look through the white book uh, from Battletech 2nd Edition, and I was correct that if you had a four gunnery skill way back in the day, you just didn't add anything onto the roll. So when you see those numbers and you get a little shocked, seeing as how the new numbers are zero for short, two for medium, and four for long, think of it. In the old days, if you were at medium range, that's six. You're a four gunner, so you add nothing. If you walked, that's seven, and your opponent has a two defense behind him, you know, that's nine. And if you took it from the new way, which if you had a four gunnery skill, you add four, plus two for medium range, that's six. You walked, that's one, and they have a two defense, nine. It evens out. And I believe if you had a three gunnery, you know, you would subtract one, and so on down the line, and the same thing with a five gunnery, you would just add one. That's how the old way used to work, which I remember when I was a kid, looking at the green book from Battletech 3rd Edition, that confused the hell out of me. Alright, we've got some more dice, let's see if we can keep the tradition of rolling terribly. Alright, still rolling bad on box set dice. At least one thing is consistent, got some standees here, I'm sure that the cardboard... Mechs will be in here somewhere. Have a look-see here. Oh, 
It's a cardboard map. Now this is the standard Battletech map sheet I was used to uh, for City Tech Second Edition, which I I actually do own. Sometimes my friends and I would take this and pretend it was ice. But again, no markings on the woods here. So we'd still fight over you know what was heavy and what was light. There's some more hex grid on the back there. Another one just like it, I assume. There we go, Daddy. Look at that. These are unpunched. Oh man. Got the spider there. Stalker. Ost Scout, Ostsoul, Ostrock. Got a hunchback there. Some buildings. Oh, look at these. You got motorcycle infantry, jump pack infantry, regular infantry, I assume. You got some hovercraft here. Almost said hoverboard. Same back to the future. All right. Let's see if I can't get that out. All right, that's completely unpunched. Got another set here. Also completely unpunched. Ha <laughs> ha. Wow, this game has got to be dang near 30 years old at this stage. So it's completely unpunched. All right, here we got another. Ah, right, here's your standard mechs. You can get your Warhammer, your Marauder. Looks like a Crusader there. Rifleman, Archer, Shadowhawk, some more buildings. <laughs> wow, completely and totally unpunched. Wonder if I can get it out of here without punching it. Got it. Another sheet. Same thing. I got another FASA Corporation order form here. See if I can't find the thing that was on the last one that I didn't find until after I was done filming. Oh, here we go. Catapult next to the TARDIS. <laughs> that is cool. The last one had a Phoenix Hawk standing directly next to the TARDIS, and the TARDIS seemed... Uh, quite large <laughs> in comparison to the Phoenix Hawk Doctor Who products. You know, at some point I got the Doctor Who box in my room. I gotta unbox that too. I gotta get get to that at some stage. Got another catalog here with some battles going on here. Some mechs fighting on the front. Oh, that's all this. Yeah, a Top Gun game. Board game. Huh. Interesting. Got it. What's this? Battle Force. Ah, the game of mass combat. See, now we just call that one Alpha Strike. <laughs> there we go. Now, if you look closely here at Mech Warrior First Edition, we've got preview of the Fox's Teeth here, a preview of Aerotech. Preview of Tales of the Black Widow. I have all of these products, and I will be unboxing them and reviewing them here on this channel, so you're going to want to subscribe so you can see that. I'll also be pulling this out. But, uh, Cyberman here, Daleks, some more Star Trek stuff. A lot of Star Trek stuff. My friends and I used to go back and forth as to whether or not Battletech was superior to Starfleet Battles, and I don't think anybody ever came to a concrete agreement. Oh, man, look at all this. Miniatures. Star Trek stuff. Man, I'd love to paint some of that. That'd be kind of cool. All right. Well, it looks like we've gotten through it, but... I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here because I want to look through this book and see if I can find this story about the Locust Pilot that I remember reading way back when I was a teenager before I end this video. So I'll pause it here and I'll be right back once I find it. All right, here we go. I found it. Didn't take me long. Two men at the end of the bar were trying to balance full glasses on their heads and laughing every time they spilled. At Burroughs' table, a young-looking warrior watched them. The veteran next to him snorted, Plague. What? Locusts. You know, plague of locusts. Locust pilots are the weirdest. Ask any mech warrior, even a locust pilot. They're proud of their reputation. 
A lot of it is probably because they're not taken seriously. The first time you see one of these goony bird things in battle, you're not exactly overawed, but they move like crazy, and they're still mechs. If you're not in a mech yourself, a locust is plenty scary. There's this locust in Fink's Lance. The pilots. Kim Howard. Tall, gawky guy who looks kind of like a locust. He loves nothing more than stomping rats, you know, infantry. For a locust pilot, it's probably the best chance to feel big. Saw Howard do it the hard way in New Mendham, though. He was scooting that little ostrich all over the streets like it was nothing, just asking for trouble. Sure enough, the road makes a turn, he doesn't quite make it, and he goes skidding, just as an infantry unit is coming out of this house to take a swipe at him. So the locust goes barreling through this infantry unit and sends them rolling around like oranges. Then the mech smashes feet first into a house and the whole thing caves in on it. Now I don't know if Howard hit his head or panicked or was trying to be funny, but his mech is lying on the ground for crying out loud and what does he do but he jacked out of the top. He goes flying back through what was left of the infantry and I don't think anyone who saw it will ever get over it. One of the infantry guys swears Howard was yelling, Whoop, whoop, whoop! As he went by, but it was probably just the wind. So Howard didn't die a hero's death. The son of a bitch didn't die. He must have landed on his head. He's getting a new arm and leg, and if anyone wants to pull his mech out of the rubble, we can have a crazy bionic locust pilot to contend with. No thanks. And the moral of the story is, don't run in the city. No, the moral of the story is, locust pilots are the weirdest. Some cool vintage art here all that stuff see if I can't focus they have written all over the archers legs man I wish I could paint that small this is a story talking about how people would patch up their mechs you know with whatever they had laying around there you go Williams took one look, grabbed Farber's wrench, and chased her until we grabbed him up and down both his mech's legs and on its right torso like a badge it read processed chicken Oh, well, hey, you know, in the field, when you ain't got no armor replacements, I guess you'll take anything, won't you? Oh. Well, we found it. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been City Tech First Edition. Now, like I say earlier, stay tuned. We're going to be opening more vintage Battletech and reviewing more vintage Battletech products. So tune in next time when we do Aerotech First Edition. Thank you so much for watching this evening. I am Tuck Davian, the voice of Oklahoma Independent Professional Wrestling and the state's premier Doctor Who cosplayer. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash tuxcostumes by searching Tux Costumes on Instagram and on Twitter at RealTFD. For convention reports, celebrity interactions, cosplay photos, fitness, and more, check me out on the social media of your choice today. Once again, thank you so much for viewing with me here tonight, and we'll see you out on the space lanes, mech jocks!